everyone welcome to the solidity fundamentals course i am anjali and i'll be your guide for this course in today's lesson we are going to discuss another user defined data type which is called the enumeration or the enum so what is an enum it is a user defined data type which is used to restrict variables to have predefined integral values so now what do we mean by restricting the variables sometimes in while writing a smart contract you need certain variables to only pick a specified set of values so let me give you an example for example in case you want to uh, you have you own an nft and you want to transfer your nft to some other person but depending upon the conditions of the smart contract and the use case there can be a possibility that you can only transfer or send this nft to a certain allowed list of people or uh, even uh, you can only perform this transfer function if you have that allowed role with you if you have the admin role with you or if you have the allowed role with you for certain other class of people who have a different set of nfts from your smart contract itself but the token ids is different you do not want them to be transferable so how do you check that for checking that you will always go to the user's roles and you will check what role does that user have so with if it's a role based game so you can have multiple roles like an admin role a role uh, or maybe some uh, you know some other roles but whatever different types of roles are possible so now to manage all that stuff to manage all that roles you you have you will need certain variables that can only Uh, uh, be select set with some selected values so you can only have two or three roles for example you can have an admin role or you can have a user role or you can have a uh, maybe a subordinate role or you, you may have a you, uh, you know owner role so all these different types of roles and you only want a person to have the role specified from this list itself so how do you ensure that how do you ensure that your app by chance by mistake doesn't assign a, some different role maybe cohort one role or you know whatever role maybe a different role nft minter role which is not even allowed which should not be even allowed so how do you restrict the choosing that values you 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 restrict that by using enumeration so let me give an example for example uh, we had created a structure called a course in our last lesson where we wanted to create a struct uh, where we uh, group related information so structs were user defined data types defined by the user to group related information regarding a particular thing so we wanted to group the course uh, whether it was a paid course or a free course what was the name of the course what was the course id so all that related information we collect collaborated that information and grouped it and put it under one heading which was the course uh, struct now you for another use case now you want to set the status of that course so now you know that there are only three possibilities in your uh, according to your smart contract that either your course status can be registered but still not started the course so you only registered the course but you've not started with it or it can be ongoing that means this course has been started i mean the chapter you are on certain level in the course but you have started consuming the course third is the completed status in which you say that the person has completed the whole course so you identify that these are the only only these are the three possible states which a user can have while studying that course so now when you are designing an application so to increase the readability of the code it may have uh, you know you can only uh, even set the status to 0 1 2 3 you can set status to numbers like this to uh, to make things easier but then it becomes a little less readable for another person if there is a, another team member it will be a little difficult to comprehend what does that 0 or 1 or 2 signify but if you declare an enumeration like course status and you set values here then this becomes much more readable and much more understandable at the code level so that there is less of the bugs less of the less of the confusion due to the status of the course so by default in enumeration the first value which is registered in this case will have the value 0 then ongoing will have an incremented value which is 1 completed will have another va incremented value which is 2 so by default if if you check it uh, this is an, these are all integers actually Uh, internally the, their values are integers unsigned integers beginning from 0 so registered is 0 ongoing is 1 and completed is 2 but just to make 
the things more readable and restrictive in nature we define enumerations so it enumerations help in improving the code readability and the same manner in, in which we uh, talked about the structs even enums can be declared inside as well as outside the contracts so what is the utility of defining an enum outside the contract that if you import that particular file in your another smart contract then you can use that enum directly so that is the benefit of writing a smart contract uh, writing an enumeration outside a smart contract so we will be writing our enum enumeration and implementing it in a remix id to make things uh, more comprehensive so here we have defined a contract named enum so that we discuss the use case for it so just as we had defined struct in the similar way we will start by writing enum enum e with small letter then we will say uh, so we are continuing with our previous example course status early brackets and let me set three the three values discussed registered so uh, it's a general it's a good practice to uh, write the enum variables in block letters it makes the code more readable it's a general practice but it's not mandatory ongoing and third is completed so once you have declared this so this means that you have declared a new data type for this contract which which is core status the name of that data type is core status so now if you want to use this data type you will have to write the name as we declare an unsigned integer by writing u int in the beginning so we will declare the name of this time the name of our data type is core status so visibility is public so let me now we will so we give the name of that variable here so here i am giving the name to be simple status equals to now as we know that this is a uh, state variable so either you can assign a value here at the time of initialization or you can do it using a function or a constructor so for this let's declare a value here and the value can be port status dot let us first assign the value registered over here okay now we will write a function to change the value so you can imagine that during the uh, flow of the course maybe during a certain point the whenever the user starts the course you need to mark the status to be ongoing so at first in the beginning the status is only registered but further after some time whenever you want to make that uh, course ongoing for that particular student so what you will do is you will call this function which means set ongoing let's name it set ongoing and let's make it public and curly brackets so here what we are trying to do is we are changing the status this is the state variable we are changing its value to how do you change the value by using the same data type which you discussed here core status and just dot ongoing so now we have made marked it ongoing it's very simple very simple use case but very important again now we so after whenever the uh, student completes the last lesson for this course we have attached a function with it which says that you need to mark the uh, so whenever that button is clicked where the user says mark complete so he, then the uh, in the for the last lesson we have attached this function which says that set complete it would mean that now we need to set the status to complete so here we will say status equals to core status dot complete dot completed yeah here it is so that's it so first of all we gave the status to be registered only for the registered users the moment you click on register button so this this status is assigned so this is the uh, uh, value at the time of initialization now after certain point we need to call this function set ongoing whenever the student starts with the first lesson we mark the status to be ongoing but the moment the student completes the course by completing the last lesson of the course we want to set the status to be completed so that we have an idea of how many students have completed the course so this makes sense now let's deploy this code 
So now we have deployed the code. Let me zoom this. Yes, I think it's visible now. Yes. So now, as you can see, for us, uh, because getter functions have been created by Solidity as it, uh, this is the feature of Solidity language that it creates getter functions for all the public variables itself. So now we created the status. Let's first click on status to see its value. So you see the value is zero. So uh, always you, you need to understand that uh, this registered and ongoing and completed, this text is only for the engineer's readability, but originally they have the values to be unsigned integers starting from zero. So whenever you will, maybe in case of a decentralized application from the front end as well, if you are passing some values, you have to pass integers to this to assign the values. It is only for readability of the code that we write this text, but the value of status will be zero by default. Why? Because we have set this to registered. Now the value for register was zero. So it's only for making the readability, improving the readability that we are saying that co status status is registered, but actually it is zero. So now, supposedly I set it to be ongoing. The moment I click this button and now if I go and check the status, you see the value has changed to 1. 1 means ongoing. So you can always go to the inner and check. Registered was 0, so ongoing must be 1. So 1 means the status is ongoing. Finally, if I set the status to set complete, I'll click on this button. Now if I check the status, you see the value has changed to 2. 2 means the course has been completed. The status is completed. So this is how you can use enumeration to improve the readability of the code and to restrict the selection of the uh, values for that particular variable. So now there is, there is no possibility that someone can assign a 3 or a 4 or a 5 to the status because then it will not make any sense. So you, only, you have given only a limited choice for the engineers or for the users to, uh, to select or set the status. So that's it about enums. See you in the next lesson.